gonna see how far I can go with this. If, if, if I don't finish it with this, push it maybe to Friday. Honey, Friday. Cheryl. Cheryl, I think is Cheryl. Are you on the live stream now? Are you on now? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, God, for what is already taking place. Amen. Father, Lord, as you anoint us, as we even speak this word, Holy Spirit, I submit myself to you, and I pray that, God, you teach all of us to a Father, God, in this word. Father, God, even as the word is going forth, continue the work of healing, the work of deliverance, and release of God that you are doing right now. Father, God, I confirm and I, I say amen, oh God, to Everything that has been said, Father, help us, O God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Even to pray through in order to pray through. Amen. We give you praise for the yes. breakthrough. Yes, yes, Lord. Lord. You've already shown us, O God, that it's taking place. Father, you are preparing, O God, a people and a place. Mm -hmm. Even for your church to fly. Your church, O God, to overcome. Your church, O God, to, to do what you have called us to do. Amen. We thank you for it. So today, have your way. Yes, Speak Lord. Speak through me. Yes, Lord. Anoint my lips of clay. Mm. Holy Spirit, oh God, just overwhelm us, oh God. Yes, God. Give us insights and give us revelation. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. It's been good. Hallelujah. All right, Bidisha. All right. What's up, Alex? Amen. Uh, forgive me today. Uh, have some great uh, problem with my, uh, my, my printer, so I wasn't able to print um, tonight's um, message last week. I don't think you mean the I have. Ah, that was Derek. I want to hear the Yeah, that was Derek, so I, I gave another one two weeks ago. Okay. Um, but again, I've been doing, let me see if I have, I should talk. This one was for last week. So we just want to, you know, again, I, I challenge you to just, you know, compile it because one of these days I'm trying to, like, you will be teaching it. Amen. You, you will be wow. teaching it. So just keep that. Now, so for tonight, um, if, if I, I might be able to send you by email, maybe by tonight and tomorrow, so you can get it by email. I don't know if I have your email. Why do you have to send email? What's the email? Underscore 21. So I'll try, I'll send you, uh, since I, ha I now have a personalized uh, Oasis of Love uh, email, my email is pastor at oasisoflovecc.org, so thank God for my wife. And uh, very soon all of you will be having a specialized email like that, so yeah, we are working through that. I can send you an email and then you can download it, print it, or I can get, get it ready for Friday um, also. Um, I want you, let's go to Matthew 5. Verse 3, Matthew 5, verse 3. Again, we are talking about the, the overall theme of what we are doing for the next few weeks. We don't know how long it's going to take. God will take us through this. We, you know, the, the, the theme or the message, we are calling it the quest for greatness. You know, uh, instead of the blessed life, it's from, it's from my book that the Lord gave me. But instead of you saying the blessed life, uh, we are using the quest for greatness because um, that is what. God wants to make us as a church. Uh, but he wants us to become great in his own mind, not great in what we think greatness should be. Because uh, the first uh, message in this series, we dealt with the seven longings of the human heart, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And one of the longings of every human heart, whether we, um, we, 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 uh, we claim it or accept it or not, is the quest to be greatness, is the longing to be great. There's nobody that you will see and ask, Oh, um, you know, that's, no, I want to be great. Now, how we then appropriate is, is, is where the problem is. You know, you want it to be great, it's not a sin. It's how you go about it that can become sin. God put that longer in our heart. We all want to be loved. We all want to have impact somehow. Now, after a while, if you have, the Bible says that uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And so sometimes the enemy or set life circumstances breaks our heart to the point that we give up on that longing. And so we just settle for mediocrity, we just settle. But there is no, every kid, you go downstairs to the kids, 
and you ask each one of them, oh, what will you be, what, what do you want to be in the, in the future? All of them have some well, you know, good stuff at this age. It's already there. It was one man of God that said, there are no kid that will you ask right now? And then, you know, they will say, oh, I, I want to be a gangster. You know, now, God forbid, some of them end up that way. But that's not how they started. They wanted to be great, but life circumstance and things changed that. And God wants greatness in you and me. But he wants us to culti cultivate that in a sense. So Jesus said, anyone who wants to be great has to be the what? The servant of you all. He didn't say that if you want to be great, you are a bad person. He said, no, greatness is good, but you got to do it my way. You got to do it the kingdom way. And what we were saying was, that when we talk about the first sermon, the most, I believe, the most important sermon that was ever preached, it was preached by Jesus Christ himself, what we call the Sermon on the Mount. And so, well, like I said, the series, and what we are talking about, the quest for greatness, and then we said the greatest sermon that was ever preached, living this lifestyle of meekness, lifestyle, the Beatitudes, is what we are talking about. In that sermon, Jesus also talked about what it means to be blessed. Because we talk about the fact that he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the meek. In one sermon, in nine uh, verses of one chapter, Jesus mentioned the word blessed nine times. That should, that should be enough to perk our, our ears up to know, okay, you know, we, we talk to people and we ask somebody, oh, how are you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. You know, and we talk about blessings like it is water. But, but Jesus explains what the true blessing is. And so last week or so, we also talked about what the blessing is. Anybody remember? Uh, Angie actually put it on, on Twitter, uh, for instance, a Twitter account now, uh, on, on Twitter, what, what it means to be blessed. What do we say? Blessed means what? To be, uh, what? To, be, to be well spoken of. You know, when God speaks highly of you, you know, and so God, uh, Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit. God, uh, Jesus said, well spoken of by God for those who are what? Poor in spirit. And we, we, are, and we also said that you know, uh, God, when God speaks, it, it's not, it's not like just like you and I. You know, some of us, you know, when we speak, it's just words. It shouldn't be, because Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are what? Spirit and they are life. So when God speaks, it is not just words, it is a thing. Mm -hmm. So when God speaks, he imparts the life or the power of what he's saying. So when God speaks well of you, it is not just an abstract thing, it has an impact in your life. Mm -hmm. And so we said, so the word blessed also means to be divinely empowered to succeed. Mm -hmm. So anytime God speaks well of some, somebody, it ends up well with the person. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is what a blessing is. So that's why in the book of Proverbs, uh, I believe it's 22 verse 10, it says, The blessing of the Lord what? makes rich. one rich and adds no sorrow to it. And so instead of seeking the riches, we ought to be seeking what? The blessing. The blessing. Because being rich does not mean that you are blessed. Mm. But being blessed will give you the power to get the riches. Mm -hmm. see, what, see, see where we're going. Mm -hmm. And so to seek the blessing means that we have to go the way Jesus said it and to position ourselves so that God can speak well of us. Mm -hmm. And that is the journey that we are going through. Blessed, divinely empowered, someone who should be envy, someone that God is speaking of. We give an example of Job. Job's troubles actually began when God started speaking well of him. <laughs> God, God told that have you considered my servant Job? You know, because the devil thought, in fact, the devil told God that God, uh, uh, Job does not serve you anyhow. It is because you have what? Bless him. That's why he fears you. And God said, no, he doesn't fear me because I have blessed him, but I have blessed him because he fears me. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? Take away the blessing. And see what he will do. Job remained faithful. And then at the end of the story, God gave him what? Job. So even when Job lost everything, he was still blessed. Mm. So his blessing wasn't just because of yeah, what he had. Just. The blessing was what God was saying about him. Mm. Even through what he was going through. Mm. And so in my worst state, if I am still walking and positioning myself, and I, I'm still having God speaking well of me, it's just a matter of time yes. I'm coming out. Amen. Because you can't keep a blessed man Ooh. 
Amen. Oh, the other day I was about it, and the Holy Ghost just showed me a picture. It's like, you know, you go to the swimming pool or somewhere, and you have this uh, floating device. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes more effort to try to push that thing down. Mm -hmm. And what happens? You get it down, what happens? You leave it, what happens? It comes right oh, back. That is who a blessed person is. Amen. And that is what you and I are. Amen. The devil can't push you down. Yeah, he can. He will try, you know, and, uh, but, 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 uh, uh, just a matter of time, I am bouncing back. I come on, someone say, I'm going to bounce back. I'm going to bounce back. Because I'm blessed. Because I'm blessed. Talk about Abraham. He was a blessed man. Yes. And so he go to a place. Joe, uh, he and Lord started arguing. And he said, no, okay, listen. What you don't realize is that the reason why you are blessed is because you are hooked up to me. I have the blessing. You just have the stuff. You see, the person who has the stuff is not a person who necessarily has a blessing. And so uh, Abraham tells Lord, hey, don't let us fight. Separate. Choose whatever you want to go. You go left, I'll go right. You go right, I'll go left. Bible says that Lord lifted up his eyes and saw the what? The plains, the beautiful city. He said, everything that was nice, and he left the, 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 the dry place for Abraham. And Abraham said, don't, don't worry. Because I have the blessing, I can reproduce. But you just have the stuff. Lord went, the next time we hear of Lord, where is he? He's in Sodom and Gomorrah. That is not a blessed place. Amen. And so the key here, Jesus is saying that if you connect yourself with me, if you if you go through this summer on a mount lifestyle, and we are breaking it down one after the other, then that is what is going to produce a life of blessedness. And that's what always has to be. And we are just allowing God to teach us so that this be attitudes, the to be attitudes. Somebody once said, you know, uh, 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 your attitude will determine your what. Altitude. Amen. Your attitude, no matter what is going on, mm. it is our attitude that determines. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to. I don't want to be a temperate. Uh, 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 how do you call it? A thermometer. You know what a thermometer is? Mm. A thermometer measures the the the, the, the heat Next of the surrounding. Mm -hmm. I want to be a thermostat. See, I want to set the atmosphere. Mm. I don't want to be controlled by the atmosphere. And it's your attitude. That is going to determine what happens all around you. And this attitude of blessedness is what Jesus is teaching us. Mm -hmm. So last week we talked about be, uh, uh, poor in spirit. What that means, we said it was passion for, uh, passion for his presence. And what we also was, uh, uh, when, we were talk, when we are talking about this, Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of what? Heaven. heaven. So Jesus always talked about the attitude, and then he talked about the reward. Mm -hmm. He didn't just tell you before a spirit, and he didn't tell you what that is going to produce. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so every attitude had a corresponding reward. Mm -hmm. And last week we talked about being poor in spirit, and Jesus said, the one who is poor in spirit, this is a reward. Mm -hmm. This shall be the kingdom of heaven. Amen. For that is big, mm -hmm. because we, we have to find out what, what, is, what is that kingdom. Remember Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, mm -hmm. for he has anointed me to what? To preach the good news to the poor. Mm -hmm. Last week we, talk, we said that the poor there, he wasn't referring to the physically poor. Mm -hmm. He was talking about the people poor in spirit. Mm -hmm. Those who were hungry for God, those who were seeking for God. In that time, people like Anna and Simeon, people that are waiting for the consolation of Israel. Not the Pharisees who were sitting in front of him, because the Pharisees, they thought they were okay. But Jesus said, the people that I am anointed for are the people who are passionate, the people who feel like they don't, they can't do anything except for me. I am come to give them something new. Amen. Amen. Now today, for the next few minutes, again, I'm not going to be able to uh, go through it all. I want, I want to talk about the reward. So one week we'll, we'll talk about the attitude, then the following week, God willing, we'll talk about the reward and deal with it. So Matthew 5 verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For what? This is the kingdom of heaven. Now, does anybody own the uh, Bible says kingdom of God? Everybody, everybody says kingdom of heaven. Does yours say, uh, Patricia, what does yours say? Heaven. Alex, heaven. Anybody has a different version than what I have? Heaven. Okay. Kingdom of heaven. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm saying this is that you will see that in many of the Gospels, kind of Jesus interchanges in the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. Now, I'm, I want to explain certain things here 
some of the things we already know, we've already heard, but just remind us what the kingdom of God is. He says, this is the kingdom of God, or kingdom of heaven. This speaks of a greater personal experience of the kingdom. Jesus is saying, if you are poor in spirit, you are passionate, you are you recognize the gap between uh, you, your, your, where you are, and where you could be. Or you know what God has for you, and yet you are experiencing a, a, a less than what you know God has for you. You acknowledge that. Be poor in spirit is a person who is aware of their lack. Because there are many people who are walking feeling like they have everything cool. There are people who feel like they don't need, they've seen all they can, they can see in the kingdom. But Jesus said, if you recognize that there is a gap, then I have more of an experience of the kingdom for you. You are going to experience more. But again, when we talk about the kingdom, is that if, if, for some people it may be a big word. Okay, what is the kingdom? We talk about Matthew 6, 23. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean? What, what is the kingdom? Anybody now, let me turn it around. Anybody, what is the kingdom to you? What is the kingdom of heaven? What does that mean? Come on. Preachers. Okay. Um, and I'm going to refer to it as a scripture. I don't know it verbatim, but it says, um, seek the first kingdom of God, all these things add on to you. And well, what I get from that is seeking the Lord himself. Okay. Like seeking him first. That's the kingdom of God. Like seeking his goodness and doing right by him. You know, love the Lord your God with your heart. By his good Thank you. definitions that are coming here. And connect it to what he's saying first and I'll, I'll break it down. I mean, the way you guys explained it, doesn't it make you want to have a poor in spirit because he's saying the only way... Oh, okay. I'm good. <laughs> You're blessed. I'm blessed. The only way... I'm going to hold it. The only way that you are going to have that experience is by being poor in spirit. You know, all the grandiose, you know, the expressions that you, you were given. I mean, think about it. Because if Jesus says that blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. then the opposite is true. Blessed are not those who are not poor in spirit, for this will not be the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if I want everything that you guys just talked about mm -hmm. and which we should all want then it be also me to find out and ask myself, am I poor in spirit? What does it mean? So to go and deeper, do I have passion for the presence? Do I have hunger for God? Because like you're saying, 
It is God himself. It is everything he has and everything he is, is, is his glory. Now, just to give uh, you know, a, a breakdown, the, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom, it comes from two words. King and then what? Domain. Dom. So it is simply the king's domain or the realm that the king rules. Mm -hmm. So if that is the case, Jesus is saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is where God mm. is reigning. Mm. That means the more I am poor in spirit, mm -hmm. the more I'm allowing God to reign in my affairs. Now, if God is reigning in my affairs, mm. come on, where is the devil in, 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 mm. in this? Amen. Which means that not everywhere is God's mm -hmm. kingdom. Mm -hmm. The earth is the Lord's, mm -hmm. the fullness thereof. Mm -hmm. But it is not everywhere that Jesus is Lord. Mm -hmm. There are some nations that are banned Jesus. There are some homes that Jesus is not Lord. Mm -hmm. His kingdom is not allowed to penetrate mm -hmm. in that home. Mm -hmm. So therefore, God's influence, God's domain. Now, someone will say, oh, what are you saying? That? No, God is everywhere, but he is not everywhere. What do I mean by that? As as being omnipresence, mm -hmm. he is everywhere, mm -hmm. but he is not manifested mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. I mean, God is in every church, but he's not in every church. Mm -hmm. There are degrees. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 for the most part, it is, it, 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 it is de de uh, dependent on the hunger mm -hmm. that people have mm -hmm. that he's going to express himself. So he's always waiting, like the logician says, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. Mm. Mm. So he's he's saying that my kingdom is different. It is it is it is it is it is a kingdom of heaven, but he says that whatever is there, I want it here. Mm -hmm. So like you said, yes, it it is not just the geographical place of heaven where we die, we are saved, we go to. But it is the atmosphere of heaven. Amen. It is the power of glory to God. Amen. It is the glory of heaven. Amen. That is why in that prayer that Jesus asked us to pray, he said, your kingdom come, mm -hmm. your will be done on earth. Mm -hmm. So now he's kind of explaining to you, my kingdom is where my will is being done. Mm -hmm. So if my kingdom is in full force, then sickness doesn't have to be because sickness is not my will. Poverty is not my will. Mm -hmm. Lack is not my will. And so anywhere that God's kingdom is really in effect, what you see in heaven ought to be here. So therefore, Jesus is saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is heaven on earth. Mm. Amen. Because you attract the kingdom of heaven into your circumstance. Amen. Into your situation. And this is the word of God, and we got to believe it or leave it. So he says the kingdom of God represents God's domain, his realm, or his rule. In other words, it is everywhere God's dominion reaches and touches. It is a mindset governed by God which produces a lifestyle. See, a mindset produces a lifestyle influenced and dominated by the will of God. Paul described it this way. Now, if you want a definition of the kingdom of God, Paul gave us a definition in Romans 14 verse 7. You can write it down. Again, I will send this uh, to everybody. Remember this scripture? Uh, Paul said, the kingdom of God is not in meat or in drink, mm -hmm. but it is what? Righteousness, mm -hmm. joy, uh -huh. and love or peace, peace. In, the Holy Ghost. in the Holy Ghost. Oh, mm -hmm. this is the whole sermon of this home. Mm -hmm. yeah. Check this out. Righteousness, mm -hmm. Peace yes. and joy mm -hmm. in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, each of these three things I mentioned, righteousness, and you can take a whole sermon and preach on, on what that means. Peace. Peace meaning what? Shalom. Nothing missing and nothing broken. Mm -hmm. Not just a, a peace of mind, not just, you know, a, a absence from whatever. But in the midst of trouble, you mm. have this kind of peace. Amen. Peace meaning prosperity. Peace meaning welfare. Peace meaning you know, prosperity in your marriage, in your mind, in your body. And so Jesus said, righteousness, God's way of doing things. Now, I, I, uh, I think the third or fourth reality talking about those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, 
they shall be filled. We'll talk more about what that righteousness is. Peace and then joy. Where do we find joy? In his presence. Mm -hmm. Amen. The joy of the Lord is on the in his presence is what? Fullness of, of joy. joy. You can't find it anywhere. Else. So again, but it is all in the what? Holy Spirit. So we can therefore surmise and say the kingdom of God is in the Holy Ghost. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, not outside the Holy Ghost. So everything that you are going to experience in the kingdom, it has to come through what? The Holy, the Holy Ghost. Ghost. You have to find the Holy Ghost because it is in Him you will have the righteousness, the peace, and the joy. So again, let's define Matthew 5 verse 3 based on this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the what? Righteousness, peace, and joy. Where? In the Holy, in Ghost. The Holy Ghost. I want righteousness. I want peace. And I want joy. Amen. In the Holy Ghost. Let me just uh, do this for last one and then we'll, we'll, we'll break and go uh, for, for next week. Jesus spoke more of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, depending on which version of the Bible you are using. He spoke more of them than any other subject in the whole Bible. I mean, look at the whole Gospels. Jesus talked more about the kingdom more than he spoke about the church. In fact, in the whole New Testament or the whole Gospels, we find the church mentioned only one time. Matthew 16, I believe, 16, 16, where it says, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Mm -hmm. And so today, many of us are focused so much on the church that, 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 that we are missing what the kingdom is. In fact, one day I was preaching and God, uh, 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 I said this and I knew God, I mean, I didn't think about it. And I was telling the people, God said, many of us are in church, but we are not in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it is key, as we build a foundation in different oasis, we don't just want it to be a church. We, we are looking for the kingdom of God mm -hmm. to happen to us. See what I'm saying? Amen. This is not just a religious institution. It's not just, you know, uh, status quo, religion, coming tradition. You know, no, 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 no. I'm going after the kingdom. Bible says that the kingdom of God was separate violence. violence. Yeah. Doesn't mean that we kill each other. <laughs> it means we kill the devil. Yeah. No. <laughs> you know, it, it, it actually means that the kingdom of God allows for violence in the spirit. For mm -hmm. violence in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And the violence, take it, take it by force. Amen. The kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God. And that is what we think about. Jesus spoke about the kingdom. If you look through the Gospels, I challenge you. You know, go look at your components and look at how many times he showed that the kingdom of God that anything, that heaven or hell, the kingdom. That's why every time his parables, he said, the kingdom of God is like this. A man going to sow seed. The kingdom of God is like this. Always trying to give them a picture of what the kingdom is. Mm -hmm. So that they will have an understanding so they can but, go into it. And so he said this, that it is the first message that Jesus preached. It was the first message that John the Baptist preached. And it was the message he asked his first disciples or apostles to go and preach. This is why I want to kind of uh, end so we, we think about it. This is, you know, in, in the Bible, we have what we call the, 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 um, the principle of first mention. Meaning that any time something is mentioned first, it takes precedence. It, it, it kind of guides the rest of everything else you learn about it. This is the first message. John the Baptist shows up on the scene, and then we read. Let's, let's read these scriptures quickly, and then we will. Praise God. Oh, need some time for this. Let's go to... Uh, Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Just give me a couple more minutes. Yes, Matthew chapter 3. Are you there? Look at verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching. And then and I'm going a little um, going. He said, Saying, Repent ye for the war. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's a message. That was John the Baptist's message everywhere he went. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Then you go to Matthew 4, 17. Jesus has just been baptized by 
John the Baptist. He has gone into the world and has been tempted 40 days, 40 nights by the devil. Now he comes, Bible says, into the city with great power and with, with great anointing. And the first message he preaches, Bible says in verse 17, Matthew 4, from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, what? Repent. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now let's go to now Luke chapter 9, 1 and 2. And then I'll, I'll just explain something, something small, and then we'll, we'll go. Luke 9, 1 and 2. The reason I'm, I'm stating this is that we have to preach what Jesus preached. See, we are not preaching repent. The kingdom of God is, is at hand anymore. We have to preach what Jesus preached. Bible says in Luke 9, 1 and 2, then he called his 12 disciples together and he sent them to preach what? The church. Is that what he says? Mm -hmm. I'll skip a few, a few words. He sent them to what? To preach what? The kingdom. They were supposed to preach the what? The kingdom of God and to heal the sick. That was their assignment and that is our assignment. I just want to lay this down. This is our assignment. To receive the kingdom and to release the kingdom. Mm -hmm. To receive the kingdom and to release it. To preach it and to heal the sick. Are we here? In fact, in the book of Matthew 24, when Jesus is talking about the end times, one of the key keys is when he it, and this gospel of the what? Kingdom. Amen. Shall be preached to all people, mm -hmm. and then the end shall come. Real quick, I want to just mention something here again. Going back to the Matthew 3 and Matthew 4. Jesus says, or John the Baptist comes and says, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus comes, he says what? Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Why repent? See, because the word repent has now gotten a very negative connotation. Because it is connected to what? Sin. So anytime we say somebody repent, they're like, oh, what did I do? You know. And do you notice that, let me just put it this way. The way we see the word repent is not the way they saw it back in those days. When Jesus said repent, it wasn't necessarily talking about sinful lifestyle. He wasn't telling them, oh, because you are a fornicator or you are a thief. Or, that wasn't the thing. The word repent simply means change your mind. Have a different mindset. Mm -hmm. And so this is the, the, the whole thing that is coming. Remember in those days, they were living under a kingdom. Mm -hmm. The Roman kingdom was in effect. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I'm going my smuro here. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh. And what is a kingdom? A kingdom, when they come and take over a certain area, mm -hmm. They change the norms, they change the culture, they change the way you dress, they change the way you talk, they change everything so that you begin to think like the mother kingdom. Mm -hmm. I know it because, again, uh, some of us coming from Bahamas or Africa, you know, we just celebrated our independence about two weeks ago, 50, what, well, seven? Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, but we were colonized by the British, same thing. And British was a, it's a small colony or a small country, but they colonized most of the world. And they sent people to Ghana. That's why, you know, sometimes still Americans some still ask me, I mean, how come you speak good English? I mean, I'm like, well, we were colonized with the Brit like uh, with British, just like you guys. <laughs> yeah, the British colonized America too now. No, they didn't. Oh, they did not? Okay, no. well, my history is not helpful no, for me. That's why the art is different here. No, no, it was different, but King George had influence here, right? No. Okay, but in Ghana. In England, I know, yeah. But in, in, in Ghana, in the Bahamas, everything, they transported everything. So in Ghana, we were driving right. Bahamas, they still drive right? We still drive right. Okay. And I think they too. No. No. I mean, everything that we do is, 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 is like they were doing in, in England. So we spoke English, yeah. whether we liked it or not. But they didn't impose it. It was gradually, they were helping in our schools. So they were going to see. So as you grow, your children begin to think like they're, they're British. After today, even if, after we have independence, our parliamentary system is just like the British system. Yes. But what I'm saying is, in the same way in those days, when the Romans took over a land, they imposed their norms, their culture, 
everything they did, the Jews became like the Romans. So Jesus comes and says, guys, I am coming with a new kingdom. And before you can enjoy what I'm coming with my kingdom, you got to change the way you think in this kingdom that you are in. Because in the Roman kingdom, you, you strive for whatever you want. You kill, you steal, you, 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 you know, like the, uh, the tax collectors, you, you have to just amass things. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is unlike the kingdom of the Roman people. Mm -hmm. So before you can receive, there's a new kingdom coming, but you got to have a new mindset. Mm -hmm. You have to repent. You have to change the way you're thinking. And folks, that is the same thing God is still telling us. Because for us, we may not be living in the kingdom of the Romans, but we have been translated, the Bible says, from the kingdom of what? Darkness into the kingdom of light. But for most of us, even though we have been translated from darkness, we still have the mindset of the world. I, 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 I will get to what I'm saying. Yeah. We still have a mindset. Even after we have been saved, our spirit is saved, but our mind, that is why Romans says what? Be ye transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. Amen. Because if your mind is not renewed, if you are not repentant, if you are not changing, that is why I, uh, you have to repent every day. Every day. Uh, it's not just about, you know, oh, I, 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 I cast or I, I did this and then, yeah, I repent for that too. But it, it goes beyond that. God wants to change the way we think so that we can apply what we have. So you read in the book of the game, Matthew, Jesus, uh, uh, John the Baptist, real quick. This is what he's talking about, repentance. They were coming for baptism. The uh, baptism of what? Repentance. And then he told them, go and bear fruits worthy of what? Repentance. If you have two clothes, give what? One away. Hmm. If you are a soldier, don't beat people. So he was, he was changing their attitude. He's like, this is how it works in the Roman system. In God's kingdom, it is different. And what I'm saying here before we leave is, let us begin, if, uh, wherever you are in your mindset concerning what God wants to do in your life, let us begin to think that Jesus, in teaching the Sermon on the Mount, he was giving us the constitution of the new kingdom. He's saying that, listen to me, in the kingdom where you are coming from, it's okay to leave your wife, it's okay to beat your husband, it's okay to still, you know, doing all those things. But in this kingdom, you have to be poor in spirit, mm. you have to be meek, you have to be merciful. You have to be compassionate. Uh, when somebody slap you, you have to take mm. the other one and let them slap you on the other one. How many of us are living that one? <laughs> uh, you get what I'm saying? You know, he said it. He said, you have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a two for <laughs> But now I'm telling you, don't resist evil. I'm like, Jesus, are you sure? What am I saying? Being poor in spirit allows you to position yourself to receive the kingdom of heaven, the benefits. I, was, I want to go to the benefits, and uh, what I'll do is on Friday, we'll take some time and, and do the teaching and use that to be our prayer because I want us to pray those benefits. Hallelujah. Let's stand on that. Let's stand on that. Hallelujah. Come on. Okay, now let me just challenge us. Please, as, as um, we're praying and, and, and you know, Janine Well said and all that, um, let's also try and get here on time so we can put, uh, have those prayer stuff way ahead, you know, do all the prayers so we can have some more time um, if possible to go into some of these things. Father, we thank you this evening. Thank you for the kingdom of heaven. Come on, just for me, Omar, just for Amen. a couple of minutes. Let's, 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 let's pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ask God right now. Bible says repent. He says repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hallelujah. Why don't we repent right now? Just begin to ask God, God, give me a new mindset. It is a mindset, the kingdom of heaven, it's a mindset that produces a lifestyle. Hallelujah. It's a mindset that produces a, a lifestyle. In the name of it's a mindset. Hallelujah. Bible says, let this mind be in you like it was in Christ Jesus. Bible says that we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Ask God, even this week, hallelujah, to, to, to challenge your mind, to challenge your attitude. Hallelujah. Ask him, hallelujah, help me to be poor in spirit. Why don't you try the word? Why don't you ask him, Lord? Hallelujah. I want to experience your kingdom like I have ever experienced it before. I want to experience the righteousness, the peace, the 
joy that is in the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody, just pray for a second or two and say, God, I need your kingdom more than ever before. Impact, oh God, my lifestyle. Impact, oh God, my mindset. Renew my mind, oh God. Help me not to think. Deliver me from stinking thinking. In the name of Jesus, for most of us, hallelujah, glory to God, we are where our mind is. Bible says, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. I bind every stinking thinking. I rebuke every thinking that is contrary to the word of God, contrary to the kingdom of God, contrary to what God says. Hallelujah. You've got to begin to say what God says about you. God says you are healed. God says you are beautiful. God says you are powerful. God says you are my daughter. God says you are my son. God says you are everything according to me. That is who you are. You've got to begin to think that way and begin to speak that way and begin to live that way. And God, I pray, Lord, you will bless us, Lord. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for what a day we've had, oh God. Thank you for this word in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we pray this word of God will cover not just our hearts, but Father, this will be what we run with, oh God, in oasis of love. We will be a people that is passionate for your presence. Amen. We will experience the kingdom of God in more dimensions, higher dimensions. Father, I thank you, God, for everyone here, Lord. Thank you for Patricia. Thank you for Jane. Thank you for Alex. Thank you, Lord God, for Andy. Thank you for Cheryl. Thank you, God, for those that, Father God, weren't able to make it, Father. We bless them also. Oh, Father God, we thank you, God, that next week, Lord God, you will fill this place, oh God. Amen. Father, throughout this week, I pray, as we pray, God, you will move on our prayers like never before. Order our steps this week. Thank you, God, that spring has sprung. And Lord, you are saying we are springing into new heights. We are springing into breakthroughs. We are springing into health. We are springing into wealth. We are springing, oh God. And I declare that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God has come. Father, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in our homes and in our lives. We will give you the glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Was that a blessing? Was that good? Amen. 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 So please, again, Friday, let's come. Let's, uh, let, let me finish. So next Sunday, uh, we will go to the next one. I believe it's blessed are those who mourn, you know, and, and, and really go through.